In class, we were talking about the patronage of the Medici family. Uh, this family represented a group of major art patrons that lasted for generations, all the way from the 1430s all the way deep into the 16th century. On the right, we see a work of art that is a uh, private work for a member of the Medici family. We know this because there is on the Virgin Mary's throne a coat of arms of the Medici family. Uh, on the left, we see uh, part of a Medici-funded altarpiece that was placed in the monastery of San Marco in Florence, which was built with Medici money. Uh, our piece from the National Gallery, part of the predella there. In the main body of this altarpiece, we see the Virgin Mary in the center being uh, honored by both Saints Cosmas here and Damien here. These are the patron saints of the Medici family. And St. Cosmas has the features of Cosimo de' Medici, the leader of the Medici family in the 1430s, 40s, and 50s. This is another work commissioned by Cosimo de' Medici, a nearly life-sized bronze statue of the Old Testament figure of David, uh, at the moment after he has killed the giant Goliath, whose head lies at his feet. Uh, this work of art was originally placed in the courtyard of the Medici family palace in Florence, which was designed by the same architect who designed San Marco, also paid for with Medici money. The Medici had come to control Florence without ever being in a publicly elected post, they ran this town from behind the scenes. They were able to use their influence to get their people elected to civic office. Uh, this is important for this particular work because Florence, the city, had taken David as its symbol. Uh, not really a patron saint so much, but an allegory for the city itself. Um, David uh, defeated Goliath, and likewise Florence was always defeating uh, mightier enemies around them. So they came to look at themselves as the Davids of Renaissance Italy. Uh, by commissioning this work of art, uh, Cosimo de' Medici is co-opting that symbol. It's a bit of propaganda. And placing it in the heart of his uh, palace courtyard, he's basically telling visitors to the Medici Palace that the Medici family are David, and by extension the Medici fa family are Florence. We'll talk a bit about the technique here. Uh, the, the, this is a bronze casting, and the way that you make bronze casting is that you begin with a, a matrix, uh, a shell if you will, and on the outside of that shell, this is so in figure A is the shell, in figure B on the right, um, the second one on the top, you build on the outside of that a thin layer of either clay or wax that you sculpt to be the exterior of the figure. You then, uh, the top right, uh, on the right, <clears throat> you then uh, surround that with plaster with a series of holes that hold the core to the exterior. You then, uh, bottom left, melt out the wax and uh, bottom center, you fill that area with uh, uh, bronze, molten bronze. You then remove the exterior and the interior, and uh, voila, you have the hollow bronze sculpture. This is called the lost wax method because obviously you have this wax layer uh, from the top here uh, that is eventually then lost and replaced with the the bronze itself, which you see at the bottom here. This was the first life-size bronze in the nude since ancient Rome, since around the 3rd century AD, so for more than 1,000 years. 
And Donatello must certainly be aware of this, that this was a, a, a kind of work that hadn't existed for over a millennium. And as such, Donatello is challenging the ancient Romans at their own game. And it, this work, like many works in the Renaissance, looks back to ancient Rome uh, for inspiration. Uh, you can see that it is still in the contraposto pose, that uh, weight-shifted pose where the body, through a series of subtle turns, is in a, a sense of relaxed dynamism, uh, at rest but full of potential energy. Uh, in order to craft the work, however, Donatello looks more deeply into ancient Roman and Greek sculpture, and in fact he seems to have modeled his David after an amalgam of works by the famous later Greek sculptor Praxiteles, who was renowned in his day for being able to sculpt flesh. Donatello does the same thing. He emphasizes the fleshiness of the figure, and in fact as we look at Donatello's David, which was meant to be seen in the round, right, uh, from all views. Um, we see that, it, in fact, it is a very dainty and soft figure. He has muscles, but they aren't flexed. Uh, he's slightly chubby, slightly flabby. Um, and this is intentional on Donatello's part. He wants to show us that David lacks the human strength to defeat Goliath that it's only through God's strength that he does. And this also would account for his nudity. He is certainly not dressed for combat in any way, shape, or form. He holds a rock in his hand, certainly, and the sword with which he cuts off Goliath's head and a helmet, but nothing else in the way of protection apart from those, those shin guards. In order to more fully emphasize the softness of David's flesh, Donatello adds a detail that's easy to miss from the front, but the feather on Goliath's helmet runs all the way up inside uh, the soft inner part of David's calf, suggesting uh, the sense of soft touch that is a theme that uh, Donatello is working with in the image. So David is, is certainly meant to be physically unprepared for the task at hand. We might also argue that he's psychically unprepared as well, because he seems rather aloof to the horror of the scene. He seems almost unaware of the consequence of what he's done. He looks off into the distance, uh, almost a slight smile on his youthful face, and you'll notice that his foot uh, rests on the, the trophy, the head of Goliath, and he is uh, nonchalantly wrapping his foot um, into uh, the bloody beard of Goliath. That's rather disgusting, uh, if we think about it, but it also ties into this theme of touch. So David is uh, certainly, on its own right, uh, a terrific sculpture dealing with the issues of, of the boy king uh, slaying uh, the stronger enemy. But again, this was, this was seen by people in... Florence as having direct reference to the Medici family because of where it was seen in their palace. Uh, others in Florence understood this symbolism and uh, commissioned works of art to show their fidelity to this, uh, the powerful Medici family. Uh, this one from the National Gallery by one of the two Rossellino brothers. They often work together and we're not quite sure which of the two did this. Uh, you can see it's based directly on Donatello's David and was made for the Martelli family who was an ally and supporter of the Medici. So just like Donatello's David, it shows, uh, again, this sort of uh, overly, uh, almost effeminate version of the uh, contraposto pose with the foot resting directly on the head of Goliath, now holding his sling in his hand rather than the sword with which he decapitated Goliath, and clothed rather than nude but again with the same sense of aloofness, and certainly made specifically to, uh, uh, to symbolize the alliance of the Martelli family uh, with, with the Medici family. 
That said, David is important to everyone in Florence. Uh, all of them realize that David is the symbol of the city itself. And uh, we need to remember this when we're talking about the sort of choices that artists make. This work by Castaño also shows David with Goliath's head. Uh, less posed, per se, seems as if he's still leading his troops here. The odd shape of this work is because it was uh, originally a shield that would be carried in a parade. And the bumps that you see um, on the shield, here for example, and here, you can see them there as well, and here, these bumps are where the strap on the back would have uh, attached to the shield. It's painted on leather, which has been attached to wood. And like I said, would have been carried in, in, a, in a civic parade in the city of Florence, and uh, could have been carried by anyone in Florence. Uh, we're not quite sure by whom. That said, most parade shields that survive are painted with family coats of arms, not with biblical scenes. And so one questions, we don't have any proof, but there is the possibility this might have been made for a Medici family member, or even a friend of the Medici to show that same sort of alliance. Finally, Castaño, too, turns to ancient sculpture for his uh, uh, composition. We've seen many artists now in the 15th century relying on uh, Roman works of art as the basis for their body types. And uh, this famous sculpture, still surviving in Florence, uh, provided the basis for uh, Castaño's uh, composition of David. So our, our image of David was uh, commissioned probably by Cosimo de' Medici. It's in the time frame of his leadership of the Medici family. On the right, we have a, a portrait medallion. It's larger than a coin. It's about the size of a frisbee, um, uh, made immediately after Cosimo's death. But he is the, the head of the family. He is the uh, called the, the father of the family, the uh, uh, Pater Patrie, the father of, of the patriarch of the family. And his, his uh, heirs continued to rule Florence from behind the scenes through most of the uh, 15th century. Um, here is his grandson, one of two of his grandsons, uh, Giuliano de' Medici, uh, a portrait bust by uh, Andrea del Verrocchio, that was probably commissioned um, uh, at Giuliano de' Medici's uh, coming of age celebration, where uh, the family mounted a series of celebratory uh, jousts and other uh, festival events and banquets. And we see Giuliano wearing this fantastic armor that was probably meant simply to parade around in uh, during that uh, coming of age celebration. We see directly on the breastplate a sort of Medusa-like figure, although with wings uh, screaming out at us. This is not the sort of thing you would wear into any kind of battle, but only in situations where your armor is, is there for decoration rather than for, uh, uh, rather than for protection. The National Gallery has a second portrait of Giuliano de' Medici uh, by our old friend Sandro Botticelli, who worked often for the Medici family. Uh, we already saw the Madonna and Child that he had painted for her. Um, Giuliano had died uh, in 1478, um, and this, we think, is a posthumous portrait. He uh, is placed in front of a open window, partly open to uh, the great beyond, really. There's nothing out there but sky. And you can see that Botticelli has taken the time to arrange it in one-point perspective. Uh, but the idea of the shutters opening to the heavens suggests uh, that, Giul that Giuliano has departed. And the style of the work within Botticelli's career uh, coincides with uh, uh, the time that we know that he died. There's a bird uh, poised on a branch in the lower left corner. 
this probably relates to uh, Giuliano's uh, best friend, Simonetta Vespucci. Yes, that's the same family as Amerigo Vespucci, whose name uh, has been given to America. Uh, but they had been friends, and the bird that we see here, this pigeon, uh, were, they were believed to have mated for life and be remain uh, faithful even after the passing of the other. Uh, and so this figure here, poised on the branch, suggests that ongoing faithfulness even in the face of death. The National Gallery also has a portrait by Andrea del Verrocchio of Giuliano's brother Lorenzo de' Medici, who came to be the head of the family uh, in the 1480s. Um, as you can see, Lorenzo looks significantly less placid, in fact, quite angry in this work. And that relates to the circumstances around these two Medici brothers in 1478. Um, this is a true story, something you couldn't really make up and sounds outlandish when you hear it, but the Medici working behind the scenes of Florence had a number of enemies uh, who did not like the way in which they were controlling Florentine politics. And there was a plot by uh, one of their principal rivals in Florence, the Pazzi family, P-A-Z-Z-I. The Pazzi family, there was a... Uh, uh, a plot by them to overthrow the Medici, and they decided that the only way they could overthrow the Medici was to kill the two heirs to the Medici uh, line, which is Lorenzo and Giuliano. Um, and so what they needed to do was to catch them at a moment when um, they had their guard down, when they, when they were relaxed. And the Pazzi family decided that the only way they could catch them totally with their guard down was to catch them in church. And so they, they, they plotted to kill them on Easter Sunday morning on the, at the exact moment when the priest rang the bell uh, to uh, signal that the communion had been blessed and was ready for consumption. And so the Pazzi family waited in the wings in Florence Cathedral, uh, back in the sacristy, listening for the bell of the, uh, of the, the priest uh, to signal that communion was being served and thus finding Giuliano and Lorenzo kneeling in front of the altar to receive Mass. And on hearing the bell ring, they sprang from the, from the, uh, from the sacristy, and they came out, knives wielded, to, to kill the two Medici. Um, the two of them had been out the night before, and uh, carousing somewhat, and Giuliano had twisted his ankle. And uh, as the Pazzi conspirators came out to kill them, uh, Lorenzo was able to, to break free and run away, whereas Giuliano, hobbled by his twisted ankle, could not, and uh, was, was killed right there on the church uh, grounds, right there in front of the altar uh, in, on Easter Sunday in 1478. Um, his brother Lorenzo, getting away, went uh, ballistic, um, sort of like the end of the first Godfather movie when Michael Corleone kills all their enemies, but he basically had all of the members of the Pazzi family driven from Florence. The men were killed, the boys were killed, the women were exiled. Anybody else that plotted with them was also uh, killed or exiled. And anyone that was left in Florence was asked to show signs of, uh, uh, of fidelity to the Medici family. And Andrea del Verrocchio is recorded as having made a uh, uh, a bust of Lorenzo that would f serve as the prototype for other works of art that people would then show to in their in their shops in their houses to show their Medici fidelity, and we think that our work, uh, this painted terracotta bust, showing a very stern and angry uh, Lorenzo, is is that prototype. The portrait on the right of the slain brother Giuliano may also exist in that same respect. There are multiple copies of it. Uh, this may have been Botticelli's prototype from which he made those copies. And, uh, and again, people will display either images of the slain Giuliano or images of the vengeful Lorenzo in the aftermath of this failed conspiracy to overthrow Medici power.